What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another Swift tutorial. Today we're going to be doing something slightly different from what we traditionally do on this channel, which is building stuff. And that is taking a look at access control. So here we have the different access controls that Swift provides. So public, private, file private, uh, open, and internal. So we're going to look at open, public, uh, internal, and private. Uh, I'll be skipping file private as it's not as common. So this video is actually inspired by someone who left a comment uh, on an earlier video this week. And I've noticed that most people don't explain what this is and kind of just assume that it makes sense. So this is going to be a pretty quick video and it might be a little all over the place because uh, it's a lot of explanation. But I, I hope you guys can take away what these things are when they should and shouldn't be used because it's super prevalent in uh, industry, professionally, and it's helpful for your own projects as well. So that said, make sure you absolutely smash that like button down below, helps out the YouTube algorithm. Uh, subscribe if you're new, get Xcode ready, get excited. Let's talk about some access control. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. Get right into it. So let's create a project. Let's stick with a single view application and we'll call this access control. And let me save this to my desktop, expand Xcode and jump right in. So this video is actually uh, inspired by one of you guys. So someone left a comment uh, asking some access control questions. And I realized that even here on YouTube, most people might uh, briefly mention public private, but no one really has gone in depth as to what it is. And it's super, super important. So I figured uh, why not create a video on it? So that said, uh, we're going to start in our view controller that is created for us by default in this template. So you'll notice that in here we have uh, just this function, which is overridden and there's no public private uh, prefixed keyword. So you might have seen that there are functions that are both prefixed public and there's also functions that have no prefix. And then similarly for private, uh, open, and let me copy and paste this. So you, you might have come across uh, functions like this and open. So let's talk about each of these and what they are, what they do, and what they're used for. And then we're going to do some examples. So uh, the first thing I'll mention is here I've used functions, but everything we're about to go over also applies to properties. So for example, if you had a public var thing, which is a string, uh, and so on and so forth for all these other ones, uh, I won't type it out just because it's redundant. So the names uh, are a little indicative of what they are. So public here uh, means that this function or a property with the prefix of public will be accessible should this class be instantiated somewhere else. So if you import this view controller somewhere else and create an instance of it, you'll be able to call this function. So conversely, private is the option. If you create an instance of this view controller somewhere else and you try to call this uh, foo2 function, the autocomplete won't actually even show it to you and the compiler will give you an error because it's not aware that foo2 exists. And the reason that it's not aware is we've explicitly called it private. So moving on to open, open's a little more complicated, uh, a little bit, not, not by a lot. So open and public are very similar. Uh, they both allow access in the public namespace and public domain. So if you import this controller somewhere and want to use this foo3, you absolutely can. The extra bit that open gives you and what differentiates it from public 
is the fact that you can override uh, open things if it's a function or a property. So you'll notice here we have this override keyword um, for this view did load. So if you actually click on uh, this view did load, which is super view did load, and uh, hold command and click it and click into it, you'll notice that this function is open. So this is the Apple uh, written like internal SDK that they ship. And it, it contains all of these things, and a lot of these are open. And they're open, hence we can override it in our own subclass implementation of this view controller. And the last one is this function or a property that has no prefix. And this is actually equivalent to if we had uh, internal. So internal uh, or not having it basically means that it's, it's similar to private, um, but it's only accessible within the framework that you're working in. So for example, we have UI kit here. So if we go into UI kit, well, there's a bunch of things in here, so I'm not going to actually click into these, but there are some things in UI kit that are not explicitly marked as open or public. So we, the consumers of UI kit, the framework cannot use those uh, properties or functions. So, uh, that's why most people, they will just leave a function written as such and not give it a access uh, control level at all. Uh, and access control is literally just what these prefixes are. Um, so if anyone ever uses that term, that's what that is. So that all said, let's comment this jazz out and let's do some examples and see kind of why in a real world setting we might want to use one or the other. So what we're going to first do is let's demonstrate public and private. So let's create a new file. And we'll stick with the Swift class or a Swift file. And we'll call this math uh, calculator. And here, let's create a class called math compute. Let's call it something better, actually. Let's call it, uh, I don't know, math doer. That sounds technical enough. Uh, and actually something I forgot to mention is public, private, and all the scope level stuff can also apply to other declarations, um, not just properties and functions, but things like a class might be public, or if you have a struct, it might that might be public. So keep in mind that this access control behavior um, does apply to a number of things. So, but all the rules we mentioned about what's available, what's private, what's internal, that all holds true for all of these things that can be prefixed and annotated with an access control. So because we're still working in this app target, we don't need to explicitly mark this as public. But what we're going to do in here, we are going to create a public function called uh, perform with an X y and it'll spit out an int as a return value and now we're going to have a private function called add which takes an x a y and also returns an int in perform we're simply going to return the result of add and we're going to basically proxy in the x and y parameters here and here we'll return x plus y. So now what you might be asking, what's the value of doing any of this? And it looks like we have an error because I clearly can't type today. Um, so the value in doing this is if you're writing a class where you just want to arbitrarily call some perform function, you can obfuscate or hide what's happening under the hood in this private logic. So this function essentially just calls this private function. But the caller that is using this math doer class is not aware of what's going on here. All it knows is that it can perform. So if we head back to the view controller, and in here, if we create an instance of this class, so let's just call it object, is this, you can see on object, if we type, we try to add, it doesn't even show up in the autocomplete. But if we type in perform, it shows up. And let's just say that the result of this is sum, and we'll print out sum. So let's hit Command R, and uh, you'll notice that the addition does in fact work. 
once this decides to load. Uh, but the key takeaway here is that the actual function, which is doing the addition, is uh, hidden in a private function. So there's our result. So that's a look at public and private. Um, I think public and private is particularly the simpler. It's pretty indicative, the terms of what they're used for. The things that I think are more uh, interesting are open and internal. So for open, we're going to actually create a framework. So a framework can house a bunch of things. Let's say we have a framework that does some type of computation. Um, so we have a dedicated framework for it. Uh, so we can put things there that are open that we can override in the view controller, like this view did load function. And then we can also put things in there that are public that we can use but can't override. So let's do that. So file, and we want to hit new, and we want a new target. And if you're not familiar with how to create frameworks or what this is, uh, for the purposes of the video, I would just... Uh, take away that you can create these frameworks uh, this way and what the application is for the sake of public and private uh, and open. In other words, the actual framework creation is slightly irrelevant here. So once we've created this target, you'll see that we have a foo framework here. And up here, we can also switch to foo framework. And it compiles if we switch to it and hit command B. Let's go back to the app target, go to the view controller. Let me get rid of all these comments. Let's also get rid of this. And in here, we can import foo framework. And right now that framework is empty, but let's go and add stuff to it. So let's create a new file. And we'll just call this example.swift. And let's do some stuff in here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a open class and we'll call it vehicle. And a vehicle, let's say, has a property called um, color and it's a UI color. And let's say it's white. Now we need to import UI kit because it's a color, and colors are a part of UI kit. Now, let's also create a public class called car. In here, we want to add a public function called drive. We're also going to add a private function called stop. And we also need to add public initializers to both of these classes. So we can simply do a public init, leave it empty, and let's copy and paste it and put this down here as well. And I believe that's all we need in this framework. So if we select the framework up here, hit command B, everything should build. And let's go back to the app target, go to our view controller, and let's try to use these two classes we just created. So vehicle is open and car is public. So we should be able to instantiate both of them here. So a car is a car and V is a vehicle. Now, if we hit command V, we shouldn't have any errors, but it looks like we do. So this first one's a warning because we haven't used it and we have an error here uh, that we have an issue with the equals. Oh, that's weird. We should put a space before that equal. Now, at the building, we have warnings that we've instantiated these two elements, these two objects, but aren't using them. So if we come down here, let's try to use the functions on car. So you'll see we can do car.drive, but we're not going to be able to do car.stop. Uh, and in fact, it should even tell you in the error that uh, stop is inaccessible due to private. So the compiler is aware that stop exists in here, but it's not going to let you call it because we've explicitly said that it's private. Um, and similarly, we can definitely access this uh, color property too on a vehicle. So if we go back to the controller and, and we say current color is v.color, you'll notice that it's uh, highlighted properly in green and we are able to access it. 
Uh, again, you could ignore this warning. It's just saying we haven't used it. But what's more interesting about open is we can create another class and let's say we call it boat and we can actually inherit from vehicle. And the reason we're able to do this, and if you hit command B, you'll see things compile is because vehicle is in fact open. But if we take the car class and let's say we create BMW and we try to inherit from car, you'll see that we will get an error here. And the reason that we are getting an error here, if we take a look at the message, is cannot inherit from non-open class car. Uh, and what is that telling us? That's telling us that the car class in the framework here is not open. So it is in fact public, so we can access it, and we can access its initializer and drive, not the stop function, but we cannot inherit from it. Uh, and consequently, we cannot override any of the functions or properties or any of that stuff. So that is a very quick overlook, uh, overview of open, uh, public, private, and internal. So this video is a little all over the place. So I hope I was as clear as I could be uh, with these access control prefixes. If you have any questions um, or if you're confused about part of it, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. If you haven't smashed that like button yet, make sure you do so. Subscribe if you're new. Um, I do Swift tutorials, other tech videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.